Happy fam shine suddenly. Back a sees loan, scramming a bit feely. I'm pretty good at making observations that just don't make sense, just don't fit in with the rest of the observations in, a, in an easy, familiar way. Really been scratching my head. It looks like I got bedhead. But I've been racking my brains just trying to figure out how this happened, and I can't, for the life of me, think of a way that this happened uh, that really makes sense. A couple of days ago, so about a week ago, I should say, on March 30th, 2018, there were some more post-trial filings. Uh, specifically, we've got this one here, which is document 160, and it's from Randy Bean, the defendant Randall Keith Bean hereby files due notice of declaration of acceptance of evidence and judgment and order of dismissal with prejudice. And I really haven't gotten into reading this whole document. I, I got hung up on the first page here. And what we've got is, is something that we haven't seen on any of any of these court filings up to this date. I don't I, I'm sure this would have this would have tripped me up back then if I had seen any of this on any of the court documents. We got something called a PGP signature. begin PGP signature, then we got a bunch of random gobbledygook type of text, uh, ends with what four letters uh, after an equal sign it looks like, and then NPGP signature uh, notification line. I I've dealt with PGP, it stands for pretty good privacy. And take you over here. So in this uh, window in the, well, hold on a sec. I'll just do some housekeeping here on my computer. All right. So on the upper left here, I've got a GNU privacy assistant. This is a front end or a graphical user interface for Pretty Good Privacy, the GNU version of Pretty Good Privacy. Below that, I've got a normal text editor. <clears throat> and then I've got document 160 zoomed in on the right-hand side to show you Randy's PGP signature. Now let me quickly transition over to the IUV webpage. This is just a message that BZ had posted recently, and I'm just going to copy it verbatim. And now we're going to go over to the GNU Privacy Assistant, and just in this buffer area, I'm going to paste all of that text. Let's see. Let's shrink it down. Oh. So all that text that I copied off of the IUV site is now on the clipboard here. It's a buffer area in GNU Privacy Assistant. And I can click sign this buffer text. So I am going to sign everything that's in here. And I'm going to use a particular key that I made myself. This one is just a, a non-expiring key for testing. I'm going to say OK. So now 
I don't know. I don't know that you can see this right now, but it's popped up another window. It's asking for my passphrase. So I'm going to put that in there now. Okay. So now we can see that in this buffer area, it's changed. The first line now says begin PGP sign message. And now right after the last line in it where it, BZ was signing it, it says begin PGP signature. And it gives me the version of PGP that was used to generate this signature or GNU PG uh, version 2. And then I've got all my gobbledygook text. It ends in an equal sign and four characters, and then NPGP signature. So what I can do is I can copy this entire clipboard, and I can come down here and I can paste this into just a text editor. Okay, and let's save it. And we'll just call this lunacy.doc. Well, .txt. There we go. All right. So now I've got this saved as a text file. So just to show you, I'm clearing out the buffer area now. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to take everything that I just pasted into this lunacy.txt .txt document. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in my privacy assistant. And I want to check the signatures of the buffer text because there's a signature in here. And I want to make sure that nothing has been changed in the message. That's what the signature is for. The signature is using encryption algorithms to generate a signature using the key and the passphrase. And the message. And if anything has changed in any of those, the key, the passphrase, or the message, that won't verify. So I haven't changed anything yet. We're going to verify this signature. And, you know, I need to add another window here. Or, uh, you know what? I need to do this way. We'll go over the HD monitor transition over. So you can see the window here that, that popped up when I did that. Um, it's showing that it's valid signature. You know what, let me just do this again. Get rid of all that. We're going to paste it. That way you can see what I did. Uh, we're going to verify the signature. And we can see that it comes up valid. Okay, it tells me which key was used. And everything's good to go in here. And when, when I check the signature, it removed all of that PGP stuff and gives me just the very original message that I had uh, copied and pasted off of the IUV website. So I can feel confident that this is the exact message as it was in digital form inside the computer when it was signed. So now let's do one more thing. Let's clear this buffer area. We're going to paste all that text back in, you know, with the signature. And I'm going to go back up to this message. And on the date, instead of March 4th, I'm going to change it to March 5th. That's the only change I'm going to make. All right? And let's see. Let's see if I can tell if I've made a change in the message by verifying a signature. So we're going to check the signature. Look, it says it's bad. 
It's telling me which key was used, but it's bad. There is some change somehow. I do not trust this message. All right, so let's clear that out. So what we've got here is a PGP signature that that is just printed out on the front sheet, the face sheet of this particular filing, and it's meaningless. There's no, I, I can't highlight any of this. If you, if you notice my, my mouse here, let's make it flash. My mouse turns into a cursor when I get it over the footer here. And, and I, can, I can highlight this stuff. I can, well, it says copy image. Oh, no, there's copy. So I can copy that. I can come over here to this clipboard paste it and look those same letters they came across I can't do that here there's no way that I can take this signature off of here and use it to verify anything because yeah begin PGP signature and PGP signature but but look right over here Where's the message? Where's the message that's beginning? I know everything that is between this line here, where it says begin PGP signature at the bottom of the message, and this very first line that says begin PGP sign message, with the exception of this hash SHA-256, everything between those lines is the message. So being able to cut, copy, and paste this message into the buffer area up here is how I was able to get GNU, pretty good privacy, to verify the signature by having a PGP signature just printed out in image format without letting me know what part of the message was signed renders this nothing more than window dressing it's like changing your shirt doesn't do anything it's 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 like jewelry it it looks great it looks official and over here next to it we got the date March 30th 2018 without prejudice um, I am conscience I am conscious the original Randall Keith Bean original depository Randall Keith Bean got something red circular blob that I'm guessing is supposed to be a fingerprint or a thumbprint, but we can zoom into this and you can just see that there is no ridge detail at all to be seen. I'm recording this in 1080, so zoom in, put it on 1080p, and you'll see there's no ridge detail. Now let's Let's head over here to, whoa, what's going on? Uh, let's head over to transition. Huh. Okay. I need to make a quick change here. All right, there we go. Ah, uh, what happened? Okay. We can see right here, this is Heather's thumbprint. We can see ridge detail in it. 
We can't make out any ridge detail in Randy Bean's thumbprint. I'm wondering what made this blob here. And let's go over to the last page of this document. And we see that we've got a different PGP signature. If you go compare these two, they're different. And it's both of them are placed right next to this type of what biometric seal signature and date. Except this one says March 29th. So, you know, my first suspicion is, okay, well, this entire date and thumbprint biometric signature is what this PGP signature is signing. But I can't, I can't know that for sure. It doesn't say begin PGP signed message or item. And there's no way for me to pull this off and get it over into the privacy program. Oh, darn. You guys missed that. <laughs> okay. Let's pull up the... Oh, maybe you didn't. Which one... Oh, I got too many windows going on here, guys. <clears throat> My bottom line is this feels more like Hollywood and show than anything else. At a bare minimum, this is an observation that whoever put this signature onto this front page does not understand how PGP signatures are generated and what they're for or if they do then they would know that they are not connecting with the end user with the ability to verify what it is that they're purportedly verifying and signing this doesn't make any sense at all. We've got two different PGP signatures, one on page five, and we can see it starts out with IQEZBAA. Now let's go to page one. Well, this one starts out with the same stuff. It just, let's look what it ends with. This one ends with BSINQ. And the one on the last page ends in J U H what one one Q or L. Like like I to figure out is, is this uh two equal signs, one equal sign, uh do we have a one or is it an L? Like if I copied this verbatim and missed a character, um even even in the message, if I was to try to figure out, oh, maybe it's this whole page of text that this is signing, um, even in the white space. So let's, let's grab all of this down here and let's paste it back up here again. So even in the white spaces, like these areas here of BZ's message, hitting the space bar or hitting the tab and then return, you just have a blank line to your eyes, but to this program, it's going to know. And if you change, if you put two tabs on a line and hit return versus one tab on a line and hit return, this thing's not going to verify it. So there's absolutely no way that I could even run this document through an OCR and feel comfortable that I'm going to be able to, to verify this signature. And, and, and there's, this is just mind boggling, guys. I have never seen PGP signatures as part of any legal documents before. Um, if they were, it would be used in the manner here. 
that I've got in this text editor. It would start with PGP sign message and end with the signature down here. Now, if it was this entire PDF that these are supposed to, to be signing, the signature would be its own file. So just like I saved a file on my computer, lunacy.txt, you know, let's, let's actually do that. Let's, let's do the file manager here. All right, we're going to open a file. And we're going to lunacy.txt. Okay. And now I'm going to sign this. Sign and compress. So it will either sign the file, compress it, and I'll have a totally separate file that is signed. And in order to uncompress it, I've got a put in a passphrase, my passphrase, or a passphrase of any key that was used. You can use multiple keys. I've only got one key, but if there were multiple keys, I could select a bunch of different ones and I could make this uh, document uh, so that it could be, or excuse me, I'm just signing here, but uh, I, can, I can also encrypt things. I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but if we detach the signature here, and now I need to put my passphrase in. And so, let's see. We're going to take you back over to this window really quick. I'll type my passphrase in. OK. And transition back over. All right, so what happened now is I've got a lunacy.txt and a lunacy.txt.sig, or a signature. So if I were to offer lunacy.txt, right, you know what? I'm going to put these both of these files in the Dropbox. <clears throat> and you can go and grab them yourself. And you can play around with them with PGP. You can download whatever version you want for your computer, put that stuff in there, play around with it, and you can see for yourself just how useless the PGP signatures are that are provided on document 160. So my big question to everybody is, uh, first of all, if, you're, if, if you've been connected in any way with the legal system uh, or a lawyer and you've got experience using PGP to sign messages, sign documents, uh, and especially official court filings with it, um, would you please uh, drop me an email at lunacy at protonmail.com and, and let me know how, how you do it. Because this, this is a complete departure from, from the way PGP works. So I'm going to put both of these files in there. Um, I'm also going to... hmm. Let's, let's walk through, I'm just going to take lunacy.txt here, I'm going to encrypt this one, I'm going to use this key, and yeah, I'm going to sign it as well, I'm going to use the same key for signing it. I don't know what armoring it means just yet, so we'll leave that unchecked. Okay, and right here, so I got lunacy.txt.gpg. So I'll leave that one out there for you too. Um, and you can see that there's no way to decrypt that um, without my passphrase. So you'll see th this, the checks and balances that are inside of this PGP are similar to the kind of checks and balances that uh, a bank has 
for accessing an account electronically. It takes a bunch of different information and it looks to make sure it's all, all right, it all corresponds, it all makes sense. So instead of uh, an account number and a name and a routing number and a bank name, uh, we've got a message or a file, we've got a key, and we've got a passphrase. But it's the same kind of internal electronic checks and balances that use a lot of really complicated math that would take eons, we're told, to crack. So yes, if you got any ideas of why this is here, other than just show, other, I mean, I can't imagine any lawyer or anybody versed in the legal system that truly understands what PGP signing is all about. Uh, there's no way that they're going to do this. So either there's a misunderstanding, a gross misunderstanding. And, and the other question is, well, just a, an observation Whoever generated this, like you've, you've seen how I, how I generated these. So, I mean, I guess I, I generated this and, and, and what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy it and just paste it on the front page of a legal document without, this doesn't make any sense. Anybody who generated this signature to begin with should have an idea that you can't just slap that signature out there by itself and have it mean anything. <sighs> the other thing that's got me scratching my head, and, and I guess I guess we're not going to leave it there. We're, we're going to talk about one more thing. I sent Heather an email about a week ago. I haven't gotten a reply back. Uh, previous time when I emailed Heather, she responded right away. Uh, I really don't have a perception as to why at this point that happened. But what I am going to do is read you a snippet from that email that I sent her and maybe get a flavor of why this email might not have been delivered to her because I know all of her email is reviewed and either parts are redacted or it's just not going to be delivered at all. So I said, hi Heather, I hope your stay is as graceful and easy as possible. I've listened to your recent phone call with BZ several times now. This is the phone call I mirrored on my channel. I, <laughs> I was moved to mirror that recording on my channel too. I worked as a deputy in a county jail in California. I disliked it so much that I left after three months to work as a regular patrol officer for another agency. There are blatant observations of corruption everywhere. Grace is paced to you along this particular leg of your journey. I feel for you having to live in those conditions. And my, my whole purpose for writing to Hat J was to ask her to verify some information. Um, I get emails all the time from people uh, asking me questions or reaching out to me um, just around this whole Hat J experience. And there's some interesting emails that came in that I'm not going to discuss right now, but they were of such a nature that I wanted to make sure that I touched base with Heather before I did anything further and, and put energy into, into these ideas. And so it's just really interesting that I haven't heard back from her because this this would be pretty much a simple yes or no question. It would, it would take a little while for her to read through everything, maybe, maybe 15 minutes. And then it's either a simple yes or a no, like this is either accurate or it's not. And, and I don't have that. So it feels like the system 
is putting a barrier in between uh, hat J and verifying this information. And I wanted to let the entire family know that there's things, uh, there's things happening behind the scenes. Um, and, and I'm just not sure what's going on right now. So if you've got any ideas, any love, light, or links for me on this matter or anything else that, uh, that, you know, I talk about, I haven't talked about much other than hat J and spirituality in a while, but, uh, there's some, there's some things picking up, uh, some movement in some other areas and, and we're going to dig into talking about some more interesting things, uh, pretty soon. I should say some, some other interesting things, not like more as in <laughs> the qualifier. It's more interesting than hat J cause I don't think anything's really more interesting than hat J at this point. And it's so interesting because I keep making observations that just don't seem to fit in with the mainstream view of reality that we have or that we've been fed. All right. Lunacy at protonmail.com right down there below my mug shot there. I love you guys a lot. We'll be back soon with another. Peace out.